Hey there, hi there, ho there, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. I don't know what time zone you're coming to us from, but this is the Drones of Dawn podcast, and we are so pleased to have you back. Uh, in America, this is our Independence Day uh, observed, so a happy 4th of July belated to everybody, and uh, hopefully you're reaching out and, and hanging out with us with your coffee before you head to the beach or the barbecue today. Um, for the rest of the world, again, great, great to see you, great to have you out there. Um, this is not exactly a live stream, it is a webcast format, but the Q&A is live, so you can drop in your comments, your positive encouragement, your questions for Maggie and for me. Maggie, so let's talk about Maggie for a second. We are kicking off the month of July with a theme of education, training, and workforce development in the drone industry. And we are so pleased to have with us Maggie Schuster. She's coming at us from Amarillo, Texas today in her backyard. Uh, Actually, my front porch, so okay. it's going to be a little loud. Once in a while, there's cars. All <laughs> right, yeah, so, so Maggie is with us. Um, you know, if you don't know Maggie, uh, you, you will after today, and uh, keep your eyes open because she is out and about. Um, Maggie is involved in the North Central Texas Council of Governments, and we'll talk about that. She is helping to lead the Know Before You Fly Your Drone workshop and even writing a book. So there's so much we're going to cover. And uh, welcome, Maggie. So great to have you on the podcast. Uh, I'm very excited. And I think this is ironic that we're doing it around the 4th of July about being independent, because one of the biggest things is, is number one, uh, being independent, it doesn't say be independent if you're a woman, be independent if you're a man, be independent if you're a child, or it, it's for everyone. And that's what I love about uh, UAS and flying drones. This industry is about everyone. So I love it. I'm so excited. Yeah, it, no, that, that's great. And you're absolutely right. I mean, this in, I, in fact, I have an interview after this with a, a group in South Africa that's put, putting some research together. And they asked me that question, you know, what, what about the UAS industry do you, do you see for the future? And I said, it's going to change society because it's such an equalizer, you know, like, it doesn't matter where you come from in the world, what, what your economic class is, if you can get your hands on a drone, it doesn't cost a lot of money, even you know if you're especially abled, right? Because uh, we had our diversity, equity, inclusion month, neurodiversity, right? Everybody can use drones and can make such a difference. So anyway, Maggie, you are such an advocate for this industry. And let me ask you then, where did it all begin for you? How did you, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into drones. Just real quick, I come from Chicago. I come from a, a huge family of eight kids. And so if I wanted to go to school, I had to be inventive and think of a way of going to school. So I got a scholarship uh, running all the special events, the, the, the movies, uh, the, you know, any kind of film or concerts or activities that were on, uh, on campus. I, 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 ran, I ran them and it was, believe it or not, I even met Opal Winfrey, I hired her to speak at one of my engagements. So when I got out of school, I wasn't really sure what I was doing. I was fundraising, I was working for nonprofits. Um, but um, I, I moved to, uh, I moved, I've always been wanting to help people. So long story short, uh, one of the positions I took after that is a catastrophic adjuster. And I would go out when there were horrible storms and I'd have to, as an insurance adjuster, uh, give them an estimate of a home. And you know how hard that is when somebody loses their home and you're saying, here's a check and this is what your home is worth. This is what your life is worth. It's really difficult. Um, well, one day I had one of the adjusters show me, look, look at these drones, look what they can do. You can, you don't even have to climb the roof, which you, if you guys know the liability of just climbing up a roof, let alone making more damage and so forth. And, um, I was just like, I was just blown away that this, this, this machine could actually fly up, do a, a, a fair enough assessment of the damage to alert and say, yes, this roof looks like there's damage. Go ahead and send out a, uh, a roofing adjuster to go out there, a, a, a roofing company, whatever, you know how it goes when there's a hail storm or a tornado or a flooding or whatever like that. You don't have to be the one to go. You just have to make the initiative that it is damaged 
and it's worth looking at too. So anyway, I was blown away with that. And I, uh, the first drone, I, I went out to a, a two week, uh, a, excuse me, a two day session to learn all about drones. This was a private sector because at the time, insurance company wasn't embracing the idea of, uh, of, uh, of drones yet. So I learned it, loved it. Then all of a sudden I had like a whole new world. Have you ever gone skydiving or better yet, have you ever gone underneath the water? And for the first time, it's just steps away, but you never knew how amazing under the sea was. That's how I felt with the drone. <laughs> I That's loved so it. cool. I was hooked. So, yeah. so talking about education and training and workforce development, uh, you took that initiative to go out and get, I assume you're part 107 license. Is that correct? Back, back what you I am 107. That's what I did. I, after that two day session, by the way, I was one out of 300 men that were there. And I, I the picked my one. name, your aerial, the, uh, the, uh, the two day introduction to drones. 300 men, I was the only woman. At that time, I picked the name of my company, Your Aerial View. I, uh, I found out where I could buy a used drone. And on my way back, because it was in Houston and I was in Dallas, I drove to my friend's vineyards and started shooting. And then took my 107. Uh, three days, three weeks after that, took my 107. Never knew anything about aviation, by the way. Just really really studied and I took it. I, I barely passed it, but I, I passed. Yeah. And uh, if, so for those of you that are following me uh, on Clubhouse, Maggie is my partner in crime, for lack of a better term. Uh, Maggie's the one that inspired me to get onto Clubhouse. She gave me the tutorial on what to do, how to navigate it. And she co-leads my Drone Law Connections Club. And Maggie actually was our guest speaker last Thursday. And I think, Maggie, you, if I recall correctly, you said that that, that vintage, uh, the, the footage you took over the vineyard, um, or you went back and reshot it, that it, that's going to be on PBS or that's going to... That it is, yeah. It's on PBS right now. Um, it, uh, it, it highlights the vineyard and the way that it's working. And she was, the producer was so blown away with the footage that I did. I, and by the way, I did outside, inside. Um, I did twilight so you could actually see because grapes are harvested at night and they have this big uh, compound that collects the, uh, the, and it's so neat, it collects the grapes and there's an opening up on the top. I got a shot of, of right above the compound where it was, it was collecting the grapes. It, it was, it's a really good, it's a really good scene. Then I also filmed the actual production of the bottling system all with my phantom 4 that's what i had at the time i didn't have the phantom 4 pro i i it was my phantom 4 and um i learned a lot i, I really did and and still to the today they use that footage wow that that's amazing and then somewhere along the way you got involved with the north central texas council of governments mm -hmm. well, first of all, tell us a little bit about what that and there's a U.S. task force specifically, I believe, that, that right. we're involved in with, with Ernest Huffman. And we had Ornanda White on here uh, back in, in March uh, talking about Black Girls Drone. And I know she's involved in that organization, as are you. Tell us a little bit about this U.S. task force with the North Central Texas Council of Governments, what it is and how you got involved. Sure. Well, um, the... Uh... The North Central Texas Council of Governments is a regional, it's got 15 regions in the North Texas area. And the conglomerate is of, uh, of government entities. That's, that's federal, state, local, uh, you know, down to, is it municipalities? And then it's also um, educational institutes. Uh, it's uh, general industry, and we're looking, we're focusing on UAS industry. Now, don't don't think oh, uh, don't think that just because it's a company, well, we that means we have to build drones. No, we're talking about companies that are concerned about air traffic control, so the airports in that area. We're right. we're talking about uh, the organization workforce because they're wanting to fill jobs so the workforce is with us uh we're talking about 
K through high school and then beyond technical schools and universities. They're in with, with us. And then just uh, educational, maybe not working with the schools themselves, but they have an educational program that will help students learn UAS, learn drones, learn techniques, learn coding. And then there's other, transportation is a big, big thing because integration, having having drones, machine, flying machines in the air, and then landing. That's all about integration. So that's really important, roads and, and, and roads and, and airways and such. So uh, I got involved, obviously, because I, um, my background is, again, insurance. And I wanted to know, how do I utilize drones? How do I help so that I can do more assessments and do them safely, save money. And believe it or not, that could actually go in the pockets back to our community. So that's how it started. Three years ago, they decided to put this, um, Ernest Huffman's, uh, Huffman's boss decided, hey, we, we need to put something together. Ernest works on the aviation department. The first time I went, there were maybe 25 of us. And then it was once a month, and every month it grew and it grew and it grew and it's up to over 300 people. We meet once, uh, once a month. At first we were meeting directly, you know, at the, uh, the COG office, which was great. They did record it so you can go back and see some of the, some of the presenters. It opened up basically about, hey, this is what we're doing here in the community. This is what we need. These are some problems that we have in the community. This is what we need to, sorry, like the battery is running low. This is what we need to run. Uh, can I plug this in really quick? Because she yeah, says so all of a sudden she's yeah, let me, So let me just explain to, you, to our audience out there. Um, I actually spoke in January. They, they invite, I think, two to three guest speakers every month. Uh, I spoke on re the new remote ID rule at the time and the oper operation yeah. rule over move moving vehicles and at night rule. Um, and I was surprised to see the number of people. I think it was a live event at the time. I, I feel like there was like well over 130 people dialed into the Zoom. You're right, it was recorded. And, um, you know, I mean, big, big companies like Bell, you know, people that are making EV tall aircraft and things like this. I mean, it was really impressive. And, um, you know, when people ask me, Maggie, um, you know, about the United States and, and who's on the leaderboard when it comes to the states and what they're doing, I, you know, I have to, Texas, I mean, you, you guys have put yourself on the map with this Council of Governments and U.S. Task Force, in my humble opinion. Yeah, there's nothing that I, that we're aware of that has this, this kind of collaboration. Not, not and, like it. I mean, in Colorado, we have uh, we're calling, you know, I, I think the name might be in flux, but this aerospace alley concept that embraces, you know, uh, you know, all of it, air, air space and, and drones, uh, you know, but, and there's an education committee that I'm involved in, but um, it's, it's very localized. It's not open right now to the rest of, of the nation like yours is because you have people dialing in from all over the place. And so Africa, so, England, yeah. uh, California. Uh, yeah, because I remember, I think when I spoke, uh, a gentleman from True Weather was on right before me talking about how weather impacts operations and kind of some of the technologies they put together, you know, so that's relevant to everybody. And that's what I'm trying to do with U.S. Colorado with some of the training we're doing uh, as well. But, um, you know, and man. it's a good resource, too, because uh, not only do we record them, but we have all the contacts of the speakers. So if you see something that, wow, this is exactly what we were talking about, you'd have the name, you'd have the contact, and you'd have, the, you know, the basic information of what they're working on right now. Yeah, so it's this amazing coalition uh, that you've built out there in Texas, and you're a part of that. In fact, you, through that group, uh, applied for a grant, since we're on this topic of education, training, and workforce development, you applied for a, a grant, a local grant, to my understanding, in Texas, um, and you're now putting on this no before you fly your drone workshop. So tell us a little bit about the workshop, how that came about, and you know what your goal is with that. So um, after the initiative of the UAS task force, 
uh, safety integration conference that we were talking about meets once a month. Ernest decided to break it into working groups, uh, four different working groups, one of them being public relations and uh, public awareness and education. The other one is training, and another one is uh, laws and regulations. And then the, the fourth one is integration. And um, I am the chair for public awareness and education. And we were talking about basically getting a, uh, probably the, the, the main task is it's educating the public. Whether they're aware of UAS, of drones or not, we needed to have an outreach program where we're talking about it. We're telling everybody about it. And if you are gonna fly, these are the responsibilities. You need to be a responsible flyer. If you need help taking the test for the 107 and actually defining what that meant. In other words, if you're just flying around for fun, no, you don't necessarily have to take the 107, but if you're flying around and taking pictures and then putting them on the internet and then getting money for them some way or somehow, yeah, you, you need a 107. Uh, and now you need, uh, now if you're recreational, you need the, the trust uh, test as well. Uh, so that's, for everybody out there, that's kind of a newer development. It looks like we may have lost Maggie. Uh, hopefully she can dial in. So, you know, it's always fun on Zoom. You never know what's gonna happen. Uh, but I'll keep talking and I see a couple people out there in the audience would love to get, get some questions if you've got any, because uh, we had Maggie on Clubhouse on Thursday and I know pretty much what she's gonna say and, and I'm happy to jump in here, but uh, for those that aren't tracking the know before you fly your drone workshop, it uh, the next one is actually going to be this. Let me look at my calendar here. Uh, this coming Saturday, actually, July 10th. Uh, follow me on LinkedIn if you haven't been doing that. I've been posting up information about it. Uh, I believe it starts at 9 a.m. Mountain, which is 10 a.m. Central. You do have to register through Eventbrite. Uh, but this one's going to be on drone inspections, which is right up Maggie's alley. As you, as you may have heard, uh, she started out, uh, was inspired to become a drone pilot uh, due to the uh, insurance inspections that she thought it would be useful for. So uh, they've got some great speakers on Saturday. And if you've got the time, dial in. That's going to be amazing. But they've been doing that every month and they continue to do it. Um, one of the things they did was actually applied for a grant, as I kind of alluded to when I asked Maggie this question. And um, I'm going to turn my phone on just in case she texts me because uh, we'll see how that goes. But um, yeah, she applied for a grant and, uh, you know, finding, you know, this is about education, training, workforce development. There is money out there. I mean, a lot of people think, oh, you know, educational uh you know institutions they don't have, especially public ones don't have a lot of money what i will say to you is that there is money for the taking you just have to find it and in her case there was uh, a local texas grant specifically written for drones uh and drone education that they found and uh you know applied for successfully and and i th believe the competition was pretty fierce um but on the federal side there's always, uh, you know, broad area announcements and uh, research opportunities with drones uh, that can all also oftentimes have an education or public or community acceptance component to it. Like NASA's um, uh, National Challenge for Advanced Air Mobility. You check those out at sam.gov. Uh, and likewise, sam.gov, you know, Google put in their Air Force or, uh, just put in the word unmanned, just put in unmanned and you're going to get a bunch of things popping up, some of which uh, might might be something relevant that you could apply for. Um, let's see. So hopefully Maggie can come back to us. Not sure what happened to her, but what I will also tell you is that she is, in fact, uh, here she comes. Yay. <laughs> Maggie, I've been doing a lot of talking while you've been gone. Um, so uh, while you're connecting to the audio uh, and just give me a thumbs up when you can hear because we can't hear you yet. Okay. Uh, everybody out there, Maggie is actually working on a book 
and um, it's it's going to be highlighting women in in uh, in drones, and that I know is something Maggie is very passionate about, as am I. Uh, we are both members of Women in Drones. There we go. Yay. Can okay. you hear me? Uh, we can hear you. We lost your face. Um, huh. Yep. But just keep talking, and we'll we'll just go from there. Hopefully, we can get the video going back. But if not, uh, and I'm so so sorry, it just went out. Um, that's okay. We can see you now. So Maggie, so I you broke it up in three working groups. Okay, go ahead. Uh, we kind of we kind of moved on to I, I filled them in about no before you fly and and the event on Saturday. Great thing. Uh, and to register, etc. But I wanted to. I wanted to talk about the book you're putting together. I, you know, tell me, tell me about what this book is and what your inspiration for it was. Well, I think uh, the the awareness the first, very first day that when I went to that workshop, and I was the only woman there out of three hundred men, and that you know, and really felt like did and. and yeah, you are breaking up pretty badly. Um, Something long. Go ahead. Lose. So uh, I, I know we uh, sound we about. I'm so sorry. That, that's okay. That's can you hear okay. me now, John? Yeah, we can hear. You know, one thing you can do also is you can drop some stuff in the chat, but um or in the in the q a uh possibly i don't know if you can do that if there's no question um but uh so tell us about the book it, it, you said you were inspired because when you went to your first initial training to learn about drones you were one you were you were the sole woman of 300 men in the room and um so now you're writing a book so what's what's the title or what's the theme of this book and uh what is it going to be about uh, that the name of the book is Girls Can Fly Drones Too. And it's an anthology book where I'm focusing on women, all different backgrounds, colors, you know, uh, just even, even what they're using drones for, to inspire women, to inspire young women, girls, youth, just embrace this, not only to embrace it, but to enjoy it. And the difference between what's out there now is there's a lot of technical things uh, about how to use this drone and you know all these different sensors and yeah, all these different poses and that you know encouraging open the door to to have this is over my head this just looks way too hard and i want to make this book to look like this looks like the funnest the easiest thing i can do and that's how we yeah down i mean you you know how important. yep i think we're getting about almost every other word at this point maggie um and we just lost video again but i'm gonna jump in here and talk a little bit about if you want to reach Maggie, you, you need to follow her on LinkedIn. You need to go on Clubhouse. You need to follow her there. Um, she is seeking inputs to her book. So reach out to her if you've got something. And, you know, I think what I want to foot stomp here is this book is not just to inspire women and girls. It's also to inspire boys and men because, you know, we talk a lot about this concept. If you can see me, you can be me. Well, if you can see her, then she can be her too. And that's equally if not more important because obviously men dominate this uh this field this industry and having that awareness and having men be advocates and allies let me give you a great example uh mike hirschberg who is the executive director of the virtual flight society or the vertical flight society uh just put out a great commentary on evtallinsights.com and if you haven't seen it i, I commend it to your attention uh, but he talks about this talent crisis that the advanced air mobility career field is going to be facing uh, and the incredible lack of diversity in, in the uh, 
in the um, career. Uh, so he says uh, there's only, um, let's see, 11.3% of aerospace engineers are Asian Americans, uh, black engineers, only 6% of the workforce versus 12% of the population, Hispanic, 1.5%. Um, and then he talks about if we don't, not just women, but again, racial diversity, uh, if we don't pay attention to this and inspire people to want to be in this ecosystem, then we're going to have a serious crisis on our hands. So check out Mike Hirschberg commentary, uh, Vertical Flight Society on EV Tall Insights. Really great stuff. Um, as Maggie, it looks like she's trying to dial back in. Uh, apologize for all the challenges here today. Um, let's see. I think uh, we're getting close to the end here anyway. Uh, so what I'll tell everybody is uh, next, this Thursday on Clubhouse, we're going to have with us Josh Olds from the Unmanned Safety Institute, uh, USI. And if you want to learn about training and education and, and inspiring the workforce, Josh is also the guy to hear from. So he's going to be amazing. And he'll be on this podcast next Monday as well. Uh, so dial in for that, uh, hear more from Josh. And uh, Maggie, just in our like couple minutes, do you have anything else you wanted to add before we dial off today? You're muted. Please join Don and I every Thursday uh, out on Clubhouse. And if you don't have a Clubhouse membership, just reach out to me and I will be happy to send you an invite. And then uh, Girls in STEM, and then uh, I have periodically, I have a meeting uh, on the uh, Girls Can Fly Drones True. Um, and then Nettie, Nettie Davis and I do a lot of different kinds. Every week we, we bring out a different subject. We talk specifically about, you know, what's going on in the drone world. If there's a case that's coming up, if there's a, a new, again, it's really important that we are approachable and we don't talk talk over somebody's head we're not so geeky that you're just like oh my god this is just for for the nerds well i guess i am a nerd now but we no questions dumb is what i'm trying to say so please join us we, we really are a community there so thank you yeah absolutely i mean maggie is the clubhouse maven so uh definitely join clubhouse follow her join us on drone law connections every thursday at 11 a.m central 1 p.m uh, Eastern. And uh, if you want to get involved in the North Central Texas Council of Governments monthly meetings, uh, reach out to Maggie. She can hook you up with that, as well as the Know Before You Fly Your Drone workshop. Dial in this Saturday and monthly thereafter. Great stuff. Again, this Saturday's on inspections. Thank so, uh, all right. I think it's that's going right. to be a good one. Thank you so much. Yep. All right. Out here. Thank you. Bye. Have a great